All right, you guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be reacting to how a pro player plays Call of Duty. Now, this is Skump. He plays for the Chicago Huntsman. He's definitely one of the most popular Call of Duty professional players out there, mainly because of his entertainment factor. He's also a slayer, and he's also won multiple championships as well. So the guy has pretty much nothing to prove. This guy is amazing at Call of Duty, and I think there's something that we can all learn from his type of gameplay and his decision making as well. And keep in mind, a lot of the things that we're going to go over over in today's gameplay breakdown are things that I've taught you guys before in previous videos just to see a professional player actually do these things is just a beautiful thing uh, let's just go ahead start the video we're gonna break down piece by piece exactly what he's doing but you know we're not gonna have to break it down too much because the guy virtually has no flaws in his game you know he's been playing Call of Duty for 10 plus years so the man knows exactly what he's doing all right, so I will leave the link down below in the description to the original video in case you guys do want to see uh, more of his content as well. He also does live stream on Twitch. And uh, yeah, you can you know, say what's up, you know, pick his brain a little bit, you know, ask him, you know, what he does, why he's doing it, etc. So uh, we're playing on Checkmate here. Not the most popular map for a good reason. And the main reason is because, you know, there's a lot of head glitches. It makes it incredibly difficult to advance toward uh, forwards in the map and, you know, flank. You know, not to say it's not doable but you know it just makes it a little bit more difficult because of these head long lines of sights and head glitches you know you just pick people off so what he's going to do here in the beginning is try to take control of the middle of the map if you're playing domination you always want to have your home flag which is their c flag in the b flag that way you can keep the enemies at bay at their spawn which is going to be the a flag so that's what he's going to do here. You know, he's not going to run around like an idiot. Yes, this guy is a pro, you know, but he's still not going to ego challenge people because he wants to go on a high streak, you know, and that's what you have to do. Also take note of his positioning. He's not really going anywhere else in the map. Like I said, he's holding down the B flag area and he's just picking off enemies as they come into his area. I mean, it just looks very simple and easy to do. And this is something that you guys need to start applying to your game as well. You know, stop running around the map. You know, stop trying to challenge people. You know, Call of Duty has evolved over the years. And unfortunately, you know, it's turned into more of a tactical shooter. So you really have to think about your decision making uh, before you do that. So, uh, you know, he's rotating a little bit here. He's rotating a little bit because he's looking at the mini map. He's seeing where all the action is at and it's happening on the left side. That's why he was rotating on the right side to get a better angle of the enemies coming out from their spawn. And that just makes it easier for him to pick people off. And also, he's taking cover here in the middle of the map behind those barrels. He's head glitching. That's the term that they use is head glitching these barrels to cover most of his body so that when the enemies shoot at him, they have a harder time downing him because they can't see most of his body. They only see his upper upper half. I don't know how to get a 5 kill on this map, bro. And uh, as you heard there, that was a uh, nade shot, his teammate, another former pro Call of Duty player. He actually owns 100 Thieves, by the way, if you guys didn't know. Even he was just saying, you know, it's hard for him to go on a five kill streak. All right, so here is Skump back again. He's going back to the middle of the map. You know, this is the area that the enemies are trying to take control of. You know, and even if he's, you know, playing his strategy to a T and trying to be as stealthy and cautious as possible. Even the best of players, you know, there's just some things that are just out of their hand. You know, that's why, you know, sometimes you may have to take a death or two when you're trying to control an area. So he pulls out his war machine. Obviously, he has it unlocked. So he's going to use it to help him get an advantage and get his streak going. So whenever you have your war machine, that would be a good idea. So he's just kind of waiting. He's basically literally just waiting for the opponents to walk in. Because as soon as you die while you have your war machine available, it's going to be a while till you get it again because of that uh, cooldown. I didn't play in the beta, but all people kept saying was how much, how viable the guns were. And the MP5 is literally... So he's, he's, he's advancing up a little bit towards the end of the plane here. So uh, let me just pause it really quick. So the reason why he advances up a little bit towards the uh, back end of the plane here is because if you look at his mini map, he has teammates here and teammates here. There's no action going on in this area or in this area. So that must mean that the enemies are spawning in from the C flag. So this allows him to push up even further because like I said in previous videos, you want to keep your opponents at bay. You know, there's a mid line here. Just think of it as a, uh, an invisible mid line here that you do not want them to cross. And that's exactly what Skump is doing here. So that's why he was pushing forward. He was moving forward. He wants to keep them at bay at their spawn. 
That's why he, you, you're not going to see him ever cross this line right here and into their spawn because, you know, number one, you're going to be outnumbered. Number two, that's just going to flip the spawns and that's just going to mess everything up. And then you're going to be forced to capture the C flag and then, you know, direct your attention to the A flag. You know, that's just how it how it works in Call of Duty. I think just because, like, it's the first SMG, that's just what everybody picks up right away. Yeah, but why All right, so again, the action. The action is happening on this side of the map. That's why you see him turn around immediately. Easy kills. Someone was pushing the flag. He got ready for that gunfight. He was pre-aiming. Now, also pay attention to his movements as well. His movement is very fluid. He always slides around those corners to make it harder for the enemies to lock in on him. And that was pretty much an easy kill there. He's just literally just waiting for the opponents to walk in through his line of sight. You know, this is what you have to do sometimes. You have to be patient. You have to hold an area down. You have to just pick them off. And that was actually really smart to, to shoot through the window of the plane. You know, I don't really see too many people doing that. So that's something that you should start doing as well. All right, so notice how even his teammates, they're not pushing that invisible line that I was talking about earlier. So right here, you know, I'm not really sure what prompted him to do this, but I'm pretty sure in his headset, he heard footsteps. Also, take note, like I said earlier, whenever he's engaging in a gunfight, he's always got cover. He's behind this barrel. All right, he's being shot. What he does here, he retreats. Then he stim shots right away to help himself give more confidence to go back into that gunfight or to survive a little bit longer. You know, that's him being passive aggressive. That's what I talk about being passive aggressive. Yes, he was being shot at. Yes, he could have easily ego challenged the guy. But the fact that he's aware that he's on a streak, you know, he doesn't want to relinquish that. All right, so in the second half of the match, you're going to see him do the same exact thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The first thing you do want to do is capture the B flag. You know, in domination, you always want to have map control. Map control is key in order to dominate the opponents because the more map control you have, you know, the more uh, order you have in all the chaos, you know, so to speak. You know, it makes your opponents a lot more predictable, you know, and that's what you want. You want to be able to uh, have that advantage by being able to predict your enemy movement. So again, he pre aim around that corner, that field mic definitely gave him an advantage there. So that was very smart of him to do that. And since he knows he's going to be taking control of the middle of the map, putting the field mic in the middle where he's at is going to give him an advantage. You know, anything you can do possible to have an advantage over these players, you should definitely do. Now he's on a 17th streak. He's aware that his teammates has died on certain parts of the map. That's why he's directing his attention in those directions. All right. So he, he momentarily steps out of the plane. He retreats regardless. Even if he has a war machine, he doesn't want to die off his streak. So now the opponents are spawning from the A side and he sees this guy coming around that corner, takes him out easily. Now he's on a 20. Uh, there's somebody underneath the plane, but he's not really paying attention to it because, you know, by him dropping down, he could potentially get shot. So that's why he's playing it safe. He's staying within cover and he's taking out opponents. I don't know if you guys saw that, but he picked up he picked up somebody's weapon. Now let's take a look at this. So he picked up somebody's XM4. This is a very, very smart play. And something we could all learn from. This is something I'm pretty much going to apply to all my gameplay moving forward. Now, the reason why he picked this up is because if you look at the A flag, that line of sight is a little too long for an MP5. So that's why he decided, you know what? If I want to go on this streak and I want to continue it, I'm going to pick up this weapon so that I can engage with my opponents at long range and actually stand a chance. Because submachine guns, you're not really supposed to use them past 30 meters and beyond. So that's why the XM4 definitely suits this situation. So as you can see here, he gets the easy, easy kill with the XM4. And he's just, again, taking cover behind these barrels. He's watching those head glitches where they're spawning in from. And another thing to take away from this is that he is focused on areas where opponents are likely to be. He's not looking around this area. He's looking in this area because this is where opponents are going to pop their heads up and this is also where opponents are going to pop their heads up now the reason why he's not looking in this area is because if you look at the minimap he's already got a teammate there there's no reason to look in this direction you know he's not wasting any time in this gameplay he's making sure every single move is calculated and optimized all right again looking at that minimap make sure to look at your minimap guys if you don't look at it Try to make that a habit because it will tell you so much information that will give you an advantage. All right, so uh, here's the situation I want to highlight. So both of his teammates actually died right here at the front part of the plane. 
So he's well aware of this, obviously, but he's also very close to his nuclear streak. So he's going to be playing a little bit more passive than he did previously. So if we just continue the gameplay here. So he pulls out his MP5 for the close range engagement. All right. He pre-aims around that corner to give himself a good advantage in this gunfight. He's looking at the minimap. He takes out that guy. Now he switches back to his XM4 for that long range. Now he's going to predict the enemy movement coming around that corner. He gets that kill. All right, so his teammate's pushing up. Teammate's taking damage. He's also checking behind him momentarily because you never know. He might get snuck up on and flanked from behind. Again, he's checking different lines of sight. You know, you never want to ADS too long or focus on a line of sight too long because you could get flanked, especially with uh, the fast type of uh, gameplay that uh, Cold War does deliver. So as you can see, somebody actually did jump up on the plane and try to flank, and he almost died. So it's a good thing that he checked his back. Okay, so he's four kills off of this nuclear. He's saying, don't get greedy. You know, we've all been there before. And that's a smart thing to do. Do not get greedy. The game is coming down to a wire here. If you, as you can see, there's only less than 40 points left until the game is over. He's got his war machine. This is basically his ticket to a nuke. So good job of checking on the, those lines of sight. So there goes Nade Shot around that corner there. He's ADSing. All right. So... So this is a very peculiar situation here because you've got an enemy coming up here into the plane and an enemy that just killed your teammate. So let's see what he does here. And I'm going to explain how this is very important and a very subtle minor adjustment that he does. So look how he moves in front of this box. And I'm going to break this down a little bit. All right. Then he turns around, takes out the guy behind him. So, all right. So in this situation, this is what I wanted to point out and what makes a pro player so good. You know, it's not just their gunfight skills. It's also about their decision making. His teammate died right here. He's aware that there's enemies pushing up. All right. Teammate actually died. If you take a look at the minimap, there's two people. Two people approaching the top of the plane here that are going to try to rush the B flag because obviously they want to catch up. But he's also in a predicament because his teammate just died here. So he's pretty much pinned. So what he does is he keeps continuing his ADSing here. He moves in front of the box so that the people that are inside of this plane do not notice him in the outer opening gap of this plane. That way they don't see him and he's able to focus in on this opponent that's probably going to appear first before these two guys even get to that center of the spot, you know. So let's go ahead and play it here. There he is. Unfortunately, he misses the shot, but see, this proves my point. He moved in front of this box so that the people that are in the plane taking the B flag do not see him right away and kill him off of his streak. This allows him to be more sneaky, and then he pulls out his MP5 for the close range engagement, takes out one guy, slide cancels around the corner to take out the other. So now he's... Oh, wait, no, my bad. His teammate actually stole the kill. It just looked like he got the kill. He's almost there. He's almost there. He pulls out his XM4. Boom, and there it is, baby. Look at him celebrating that nuclear, man. Well-deserved, well-played, almost zero mistakes made. He played really, really uh, tactically. And, you know, a lot of this proves that the game sense and understanding of the game that I try to teach you guys in my videos, it actually works. And as you can see, as soon as he ran out, you know, obviously he wasn't taking it seriously at that point. You know, he died. So uh, it's all about game sense. It's all about trying to predict the enemy as much as possible, using that mini map to your advantage. Call of Duty is now more of like a tactical type of game. You know, you really have to think about all the steps that you're making, make those educated decisions. And uh, yeah, guys, so I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this breakdown of a pro player and how he plays Call of Duty. If you guys did enjoy and you want to see more videos like this, make sure to drop a like on it and make sure to subscribe if you are brand new around here. Join Turbo Nation today. Make that baby official and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's go, baby. If you guys are trying to stay connected with me, drop me a follow on Twitter at RealTurboMan right here. If you're on Instagram, I'm also on Instagram as well. Hit me up at RealTurboMan underscore. And lastly, I am on Twitch. If you want to catch me live, twitch.tv slash TurboManTTV. Let's get it, baby.